Hello, my name is Michael Lambert, and today I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the ongoing uh, uh, fiasco that is the, the the British government under Boris Johnson, and I want to talk also a little bit about the uh, the new uh, variation of, of COVID and, and and how it's being handled and uh, the message being put out uh, by government concerning it. Uh, but before I do that, I'd like to just do a little bit of what I think they call um, housekeeping. Now, I've been making these videos, so I think this is about February, I think this is about the 30th. And uh, I, I, I know this is going to um, upset lots and lots of the, the hundreds of thousands of ladies who, 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 who watch this, um, these videos of mine. Uh, uh, but I am actually married. I, I, I'm spoken for. I've been, I've been married forever. And uh, my wife has never actually seen one of my videos. I think she, she kind of feels that... Um, I've never said anything worth listening to yet, and, and, and why would I start saying anything worth listening to on YouTube? So she doesn't listen to them. But she has the idea, or someone has told her, that if if I get lots of lots of views and lots of uh, subscribers, that uh, um, suddenly we are going to become immensely rich. And I've tried to persuade her. That of course, this is 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 not going to not going to happen but um, whenever I make a video immediately I tell her I've made one she'll say to me uh, um, did, did did you ask them to uh, to subscribe and I'm afraid I always forget you know I'm always trying to think about what I'm going to say and uh, and I forget to, to, to ask people to subscribe and so I always say no and then I'm, I, I'm sent to the naughty step and I'm I end up hoovering or doing washing up or whatever but anyway if you wouldn't mind subscribing and liking I, I really would appreciate it. it would it would it would help me a lot so, uh, what's been going on uh, the last week or so? Um, it seems, I mean, you sort of wake up on Monday morning, you think, what, 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 what is Johnson going to do wrong this, this week? What is he going to do to make matters worse this week? And you can absolutely guarantee, you can put your, put your life on it, he's going to do something or other. And if you think back over the last two weeks, there was all the fuss with the, uh, the water companies tipping the sewage into the, into the rivers, wasn't there? And he had to do a U-turn on that. And then there was the question of uh, Owen Patterson, and uh, he did his best to, uh, to uh, change or reform the Standards Committee so that Patterson could get off, and uh, then he had to do a U-turn on that. He does more U-turns than someone living in a cul-de-sac. And then after that, there was uh, um, the, uh, the, um, the U-turn on the... Uh, HS2 going beyond uh, Birmingham. There was the U-turn uh, on the uh, people having to sell their houses to pay for, for care. Uh, then there was the speech to the CBI, the Peppa Pig speech, which will go down in history, I would have thought was one of the most extraordinary speeches ever. And then we found this week that uh, last year, when we were all uh, told to stay at home over Christmas, and we were all told that we uh, couldn't see anybody when people were uh, unable to go and see dying relatives and to get together and, and, and people suffered all sorts of, uh, of, of hardship and, uh, and, and uh, unhappiness because of being, 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 being separated and so on, we find out that uh, he was having parties in, in, in number 10. And uh, parties where apparently no rules were broken except the rule that you weren't allowed to have parties. <clears throat> And so it's just one thing after another after another. And uh, uh, you just have to wonder, I, I mean, how much longer can this go on? I mean, we have a complete and utter buffoon. And of course, everything has culminated this week in the, the almost unbelievable humiliation of the president of France saying that our prime minister is a clown running a circus, a knucklehead. I mean, how much... How much more humiliating can, can, can it be than that? And and what is, makes it even worse is the fact that we all know that the whole world thinks that. The whole world really looks at this man who styles himself on Benny Hill, this buffoon, this self-obsessed, dishonest, lying, incompetent. The whole world thinks he's a clown. And so do a, a, a very substantial majority, I would have thought, of this country, because he's a clown. Now I want to look about this, uh, <clears throat> this, uh, this new uh, um, Omicron, uh, Omicron uh, variation of the coronavirus, which has arrived from South Africa. 
Now, we don't really know how serious it is at the moment. Uh, some people say it's not, not, not terribly serious or the, uh, the consequences of getting it are not that serious. Uh, some people say they don't know. It. Apparently, it's, it's, it's more contagious than the, uh, the Delta variation. But we, we, we don't know at the moment. And so <clears throat> it's important, really, to, to, uh, to make sure that we do everything possible to stop it spreading. And one, one of the simplest things is, of course, to get everybody to, 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 to wear masks. Now... I've been travelling on the London Underground throughout the pandemic and uh, I would say up until about the middle of last week, um, without really exaggerating, 40 to 50 percent of people on the, on the line I travel on, the Piccadilly line, 40 to 50 percent of the people were not wearing masks, particularly during rush hour when people come back from work, particularly young men who uh, obviously see it as a bit sissish to wear a, wear a mask. So despite the fact that there were signs everywhere saying you must wear masks on the Underground, Nobody was taking any notice, and of course, people take their they take their their lead from the from the prime minister. When the prime minister is going to hospital and he's walking around without a mask on, <clears throat> when he sat next to uh, uh, um, David Attenborough at the conference and he hasn't got a mask on, uh, uh, and when he he just clearly in, in Parliament he doesn't wear a mask, people say, well, if he's good enough for him, like the parties, if it's good enough for him, it's good for everyone else. So nobody takes any notice of the, the regulations. Now, last week, uh, uh, two or three days ago, uh, um, a, a, a law was passed that you must, and I'll explain this to you because you may, may, may not be clear because there's a certain amount of uh, misunderstanding about it. I'll explain to you exactly, exactly what the law is. You must, must wear a mask if you go in a shop or another crowded place or if you travel on public transport. You must, unless you don't really want to, in which case it's fine, just don't, don't bother. Nobody else is bothering I went on the uh, underground yesterday, as it happens, about 10 stops into London, 10 stops out. And I would say 25, 30% of the people not wearing masks. The day the law was brought in, I went to some local shops, quite big local shops. I went to, I think it was TK Maxx and Primark and Tesco's. 20% of the people not wearing masks. A lot of the staff in some of these shops, they have this way of wearing masks under the chin, you know, they're, they're, they're rather stylish under the chin, some under the nose. Nobody's taking any notice. And nobody's taking any notice because of the example being set by the Prime Minister and the politicians. You probably remember uh, uh, seeing Parliament uh, 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 until until last week, when if you saw uh, pictures of Parliament, all, all full up perhaps for PMQs, the whole of the opposition benches, with the exception of the DUP, all wearing masks. And on the, uh, on the Conservative side, the government side, on one occasion... I looked very carefully. There were two people wearing masks, Jeremy Hunt and Theresa May. Nobody else. And then, of course, the leader of the House, the absolutely idiotic fool, uh, Rhys Mogg, said it's because, oh, they're all friends and they don't pass it amongst friends. And uh, it's a <coughs> fraternal understanding, I think he said, that they didn't need to wear them. Now they brought a new law in where you must wear masks on public transport in shops, unless you don't want to. The whole of the uh, parliamentary estate, everyone is obliged to wear masks at all times when they're on the parliamentary estate, except MPs, and they can decide for themselves. And I was uh, <coughs> watching last week, and uh, one of the right-wing uh, MPs, a, a member of the ERG, a, a, a strong, strong proponent of uh, a strong... Uh, um, Campaigner for, for, for uh, Brexit, uh, a guy called Steve Baker, gave a speech in Parliament. And he described having to wear a mask. This is a bit of fabric across your mouth for a temporary, for a short period, not forever, for a short period, whilst the virus is still a threat. Having to wear it in shops and having to wear it on public transport. He described that as authoritarian and taking us on the road to hell. I mean, you know, there are people in concentration camps in North Korea. There are people in refugee camps all, all over the Middle East. There are people suffering all over the world from, from authoritarian regimes and so on. And he's talking about hell. He's talking about having to wear a mask as being on the road to hell. I mean, this is a grown-up. He's an adult. 
And I looked around the back of these MPs. I mean, most of the MPs last week, most of the Conservative MPs, all, all, all the opposition benches, they were all wearing masks, looking around the, 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 uh, um, the, the Conservative uh, bench, benches. And there were about 20 who, who, who were not wearing masks because they, you know, like the guys on the tray on the tube, they, they know better. They, 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 they don't believe the scientists. They, you know, they, 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 they're not going to wear masks. They're not going to be told what to do. One who stood out was a, a, a guy who many people know called Bill Cash. He's a very, very old man. He's extremely tall and uh, he always looks, he has an expression on his face as though he, he's just realised that there's a, there's a bee in his trousers and he's not sure uh, 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 where it's going to sting. He, he's got that, that look of sort of, uh, um, he's just, just, just fed up, just, you know, just annoyed. Uh, um, and, and he was sat there and because he's very tall, he's having to stand up. You can see him looking around and, and, and he said, I just don't believe that, you know, uh, you can see him thinking, I, I, I don't believe that um, you need to wear a mask. I don't think it'll, um, it, it, it makes any difference and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be told what to do. And you look at these people, you just think how stupid they are. But again, they're setting the example. And just think about this. There are people all over this country. There are people who go to WH Smith's or Hobbycraft or something, they buy a big piece of cardboard and they go home and they find a piece of wood and they nail it on there. And then they write on it, I am not going to wear a mask. And, and then they, 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 on an agreed date, they, they go to the station, they get the train to London, they get the underground, they get to Westminster and they all go out and they march around with their, their signs saying, I, I'm not going to wear a mask. There's a, there's a, there's a video on... on uh, on YouTube at the moment, and it's uh, it's uh, Piers Corbyn, uh, Jeremy Corbyn's brother, and uh, a load of other people, and they're all smiling and they're all laughing. They're in a in a, in a train, and they're singing a song, and the, the the theme of the song is wearing a mask is like trying to keep a fart in your in your trousers, and and they all think this is extremely funny, and they're all marching down the train singing this song. These people, no no no, they're not going to wear a mask. People, scientists all over the world say that the, the, the most important, one of the most important ways of trying to stop this uh, a virus spreading is by, by, by wearing a mask. But no, no, they don't agree with it. Invasion of their personal liberties. And you, 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 you have to wonder, I mean, with people who are that stupid. And what is quite, quite extraordinary to think about is this, that these people are taking their pathetic little signs and their pathetic little, little posters saying they don't want to wear a mask. And none of them is concerned about the fact there's a law about to be passed now, it's about to get royal assent, it's within days or weeks of being passed, which will make it potentially illegal for any demonstration. All it will need is the Home Secretary or, or, or any senior policeman to ban any any demonstration. I mean, this is part of our heritage. You think back to the suffragettes, think back to those, those fantastic uh, uh, demonstrations in, in, against the Vietnam War back in the 60s. You think about the demonstration against the, uh, um, the Iraq War. You think about all the peaceful demonstrations that have taken, taken place. Very, very, very seldom has there been any violence. Peaceful demonstrations. One of our fundamental rights has been going on for years and years and years. And that's all been taken away. The right to demonstrate will be in the hands of the Home Secretary or, or any senior police officer. And they don't care about the, these, these people. All they care about is not having to wear, not being told to wear a mask. About standing up to state authority telling them to wear a mask to help protect others. And, uh, I, I, and it's, just, it's just so pathetic. It really is so sad that people are, are, are that stupid. And, and, and not only is this, uh, this law going to uh, make it uh, effectively illegal to demonstrate, it's also going to give police the right, without any just cause, right now they have to have a just cause, it, it'll give any policeman the right to stop and search anybody. All they have to say is they suspected they were up to no good and they can stop and search anybody. So you can be walking down the street, an innocent person, and a policeman decides he wants to search you. He can tell you to turn your pockets out. He can tell you, he can go through your phone, your wallets, everything what, what he wants to, 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 to look at. And there's nothing you can do about it. And if you resist, you'll, 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 be, uh, you'll be going to prison. Nobody cares about that. That doesn't really matter. There's another law going through now, isn't there, to stop whistleblowing, 
whistleblowing, which is really important. You think about the uh, MPs' expenses scandal. Think about all the other uh, things that have been exposed by journalists, stories that come out that show you the scandal of what's going on, like the whole PPE scandal. That, reporting those things, because the, the, the Home Secretary believes, and she said this, that it is akin to spying. Whistleblowing, in other words, reporting in the press, things that are going on that people should know about and that are of great public interest, showing how public officials are, 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 are misbehaving. To report that is akin to spying, so it's going to be banned. And you can go to prison for up to 14 years. So who's going to take the risk? This government is creating, not this government, this man, Johnson, creating a police state. This is a police state where a policeman can stop you without any just cause and, and, and search you. And of course, it's always going to be black people who are going to get uh, are going to get victimised in this case, and, and where you cannot demonstrate, where you cannot write in the newspapers to criticising the government. And I bet you, I bet you, within a year or two, videos such as this will be will be illegal. I'll, I'll be risking imprisonment probably. But nobody cares. Nobody cares. There's Anton Deck with their jungle program, their uh, "Get Me Out of Here" thing on, and there's the dancing. What is it? Uh, uh, strictly come dancing on and, and and of course the really really big story at the moment which everybody's much more concerned about is is Meghan Markle I mean are you behind her or are you against her I mean these are the things people are concerned about nobody cares about the rights being taken away nobody cares about this utter clown making such a mess and the damage that's being done to this economy and also don't forget we left uh, 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 the EU so that we could take back control and that's proved to be a complete nutter farce and get trade deals all over the world. The latest thing apparently is we've got a deal to sell sell lamb to, 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 to America. Americans don't eat lamb. Hardly at all. Last week we were going to send lamb to China. And the other deal, what's the other deal? Importing lamb from New Zealand. So lamb is obviously uh, very central to our, 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 our economic future. Lamb which we can import from from, from from New Zealand to replace the land that we're going to export to, to America where they don't eat lamb. Oh, and of course there was a deal with Japan, wasn't there, where we're going to sell them uh, uh, cheese. Japan, which is uh, uh, made up of a uh, population who are largely lactose intolerant. So the whole thing is such a mess, it's such, 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 such chaos, and we're, we're, we're everything, everything is a responsibility of Johnson. He is the government. The rest of the government are so pathetic. Uh, uh, they're very weak. Uh, nobody's ever going to stand up to him. And uh, until such time as things get so bad that, 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 that uh, backbench MPs realise that he is such a liability, they're all going to be out of a job if they're not careful. Uh, uh, and, then, uh, and until such time as that happens and they start sending their letters into the 1922 committee, we, 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 are, we have this guy in charge, this clown, just destroying the country and creating a police state. And we should be very, very worried about it. But as I say, nobody really cares. Nobody's really that interested, are there? Much more interesting things to, to, to think about. Right now, the obsession is uh, Christmas. Are we going to have turkeys for Christmas? The whole country's obsessed with turkeys for Christmas. Are the shops going to have enough presents? And uh, are we going to have enough alcohol for, for Christmas? For that break in the middle of the winter? What happens on, 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 on January the 2nd when we all start waking up to the reality of Brexit, when we start realising that hundreds, maybe thousands of firms have already moved to Europe, where, where our, our, our biggest market has been largely trashed, where we still have problems with uh, Northern Ireland to sort out, which is going to be almost impossible to sort out. And incidentally, going back to the, uh, the Covid business, the uh, the Irish tea shocker, uh, Michael Martin, uh, brought in new regulations because of uh, uh, Omicron. Brought in regulations, I think, two days ago, or maybe it was yesterday, saying that they were closing all nightclubs and closing all sorts of other places where people congregate until the 9th of January. And when asked why they were doing this, they said it was because of precaution. It was a wise precaution to stop the spread. They had on, on, it was on Newsnight, reported on Newsnight last night. And they had a uh, an Irish professor on there, of, uh, professor of uh, um, immunology or whatever, anyway, to do who knew about viruses. And he was saying, he kept saying it that uh, the UK has handled uh, 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 the coronavirus crisis, the pandemic, worse than any other country in Europe. 
I have a friend who came back from Italy last week and uh, he said that in Italy, the moment you leave your house, you have to wear a mask. And if you don't, you'll be stopped and asked why you're not wearing a mask. He went to a supermarket and he wanted to blow his nose in the supermarket. So he pulled his mask down to blow his nose and he was immediately ejected from the supermarket. He was taken outside and told he must not under any circumstances remove his 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 mask when he was in the supermarket. You go now to any supermarket. Staff aren't wearing masks. Or if they're wearing them, it's under the nose and under the under the chin, as I said before. It is the same in France. Uh, 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 you have to, when you go out, you have to wear a mask. And everybody knows that and everybody does that. Here, everybody follows the example of the, the Prime Minister. And so we end up in a situation where we are now, where there are between 40 and 50,000 new cases of COVID every day. And you think about that, in three weeks, that's a million new cases. A million cases in three weeks. Now they're not all dying. It's only a few thousand die, so it doesn't really matter. That's worth, that, that, that's, that's worth not, not inconvenience ourselves by wearing masks and things, uh, if it's only a few thousand people. You know, I, I, I have a, a, a Twitter channel and I look at Twitter quite a lot and you see time and time every day, you see a picture of a perfectly healthy looking person and there'll be a, a bit of uh, a text, somebody saying, a tweet, somebody saying, I'm devastated, this is my son, he was 18 years old, he died of Covid yesterday. Or you'll see a woman, this is my dear wife, she died of Covid, she was perfectly right until, until last week, she's now dead. And this is time and time again, every time you say, oh, it's only a thousand people a week are dying of Covid. That doesn't really matter, does it? That's a thousand families' lives changed forever. And yet, here in this country, the Prime Minister doesn't really want to, he, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to bring in, uh, we all know that it's going to happen before Christmas. He doesn't want to bring in regulations whereby we have to, have to wear masks or we get fined or we get, we, we, we get into trouble where everybody understands that and everybody does it. No, he doesn't want to do that. He wants to just let it go. And we all know there's every chance that before Christmas there'll be a lockdown, like there was last year. We really do have a terrible, terrible, terrible government, and it is all down to the Prime Minister. It's all down to the Prime Minister, who the President of France described perfectly as a complete and utter clown. And, uh, well... What can we do? See what happens. Fingers crossed, eh? Anyhow, that's all I'm, I'm, I'm going to say on it for the moment. And if you've watched this far, um, thank you very much for watching. And, and until next time, uh, bye for now.